Hello there, everyone. Welcome to God TV Radio. I am your host for the evening, TTOR. As you can see, I am not Brett Keen, and I'm just a little bit younger than Brett is. <laughs> oh, but anyway, as you can see, also I've played around with the overlay on screen. I decided to make something a little different, a little uh, unique, shall we say. Uh, I'm not used to running all of Brett's stuff, but hey, it is what it is. Anywho, now that I got your attention, here's the way things are going to go. First, I'm going to plug some of my stuff, and then we're going to talk about a topic that is very important to discuss and was actually inspired by my discussion with Olivia that I had last time I hosted, which was Thursday last week. And then after I've had my discussion about whether or not Jesus was God based on the Bible, we should have plenty of time left over to bring people onto the show and have a discussion about whatever I talked about before. Or if there's some new or different topic you want to talk about, we can certainly do that. But before we get into all kind of uh, serious intellectual discussion, you should know right now that this YouTube channel of Brett's is not the only place that we're streaming to at the moment. Not only are we streaming here on YouTube, but I'm restreaming this broadcast over onto my Josh Who TV channel. So let me just set up the screen share so that you can know where to go if for some reason YouTube decides to pull the plug on Brett's channel. Let me go ahead, hit that. Go ahead and share entire screen. Oh. And then I got to add to stream. There we go. So this is Joshua TV. This is what it looks like. Now, if you decide to come here and watch the stream on Joshua TV instead of this YouTube channel, or if you want to know where to go if the YouTube version of the stream gets taken down and you want to see the rest of it on Joshua TV, you go to joshuatv.com. Then next to the search bar, there's this circle button. You click on it. Then you click on Joshua Live Streams. And then you get the page of all the current live streams going on right now. You scroll all the way to the bottom where all the users actually are. Oh, wait, I thought you went there. Oh, I guess it flipped over again. Well, anyways, you can see here, second stream listed is the current one. We'll go ahead and open that. And we already have it muted, so that way uh, we don't have that weird, awkward echo. But this is where you can watch the stream if you don't want to watch it on YouTube over the next couple hours. So that's how you do it. Joshua TV, Joshua TV live streams page. You should be able to find it pretty easy. God TV radio and the title is kind of the giveaway. So now that we've done all of that, now that we've talked about where you can find this stream, let's go ahead and do some TTOR plugin. Ta -ta -da -da, activate my screen share powers. All right, so this should do it. So obviously, you can find me here on YouTube, which you can see right here on the screen. Uh, I don't have too many videos, and that's because I started this particular channel about a month and a half ago. Uh, and if you want to see my content that is obviously not part of Brett's live streams, you can go to my YouTube channel to start just to see what I got there. But YouTube, of course, is not the only place that I put my content to. I'm also on Joshu TV, which you can see right here on the screen. This is actually what I consider to be my primary platform because I live stream here. And I use my Joshu TV channel to put my content onto Roku as well as onto the Joshu Radio Network. And I get hundreds of views on pretty much all my Joshu TV videos after I share them around social media. So... I'm doing very good here. I actually have one of the top 10 channels on Joshu TV, just to give you an idea of how small of a site it is. But I'm doing well here, and this is another great place you can watch my content, a place where freedom of speech is honored and you don't have to worry about any kind of censorship at all. I also am on BitChute, where I have just under 2,300 subscribers, and I'm actually in the top 5% of creators on BitChute in terms of subscriber count and total video views. 
So that's another place you can find my content. And then, of course, I'm on YouTube where I have 159 subs and I back up my videos here. And if you scroll through my library, you'll see I have hundreds of views on lots of my videos on YouTube. So that's also a good place to find my content as well. As far as social media goes, there's a few places. Actually, there's a lot of places you can find me, but I'll give you three easy ones that are easy enough to remember. First, there's my account on Gab. I have over 1,300 followers on Gab because I've been on it since December of 2017. So I've had time to grow my following there. I even got the blue check mark, so you know it's me on Gab. So if you want to follow me on Gab, enjoy yourself and keep up with my updates there. I'm also on Getter, which is another Twitter alternative where I have 179 followers. And I also share my content here. So if you don't like Twitter, but you don't like Gab, and you want to follow me somewhere that you may like, Getter is a good place to do that. You'll find the links to all the sites I've mentioned in the description box below. I'm also on Twitter under the username TTOR underscore official. Now that Elon Musk owns Twitter, there's a theory, possibly a conspiracy theory, we'll see, that Twitter is about to get a lot more free in terms of the things you can say and do on there. I've been on Twitter for a while before this anyway, but go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you want, and you can keep up with my updates and whatnot over on Twitter as well. That one's not in the description box below, but just go to Twitter, type in TTOR underscore official, and you'll find me. Now, before we get into the more serious part of our live stream, we're going to go ahead and promote a little project that I'm working on, one that primarily I need to raise some funds for in order to make it happen. I'm trying to start my own video sharing site called Quarter because I'm tired of YouTube censorship. I'm tired of alt tech sites that got popular in terms of video sharing sites that are run by lying grifters who adopted all the same censorship policies and AI systems that YouTube and big tech does. So I want to start one of my own, my own YouTube alternative that doesn't do any of that crud. And that's where I came up with the quarter project. Here I have the Give, Send, Go campaign for the quarter project. I'm trying to raise $2,000 so that I can start and run the site for a year. And so far we've raised $177. So if you want to support the quarter project and help me create a video sharing site that actually champions freedom of speech while simultaneously having all of the features you would want in a video sharing site, I would encourage you to contribute to the quarter project through the Give, Send, Go campaign. There's also the Flatter account I made for the quarter project where you can do one-time or monthly tips and donations. All the money you send through that will also go towards the project. So if you want to help that way, you can. So that's it. That's where you can find me on social media, generally speaking. And that's the big project I'm working on that I'd love to deliver to you guys as soon as possible. As soon as I raise the $2,000, I'll be able to get the site started because I have the hosting provider all set up. I know which servers I need. I have the script picked out. My friend is an expert with the script, so he'll help me set it up, make it just right. And I know what kind of plugins I can get for the script to make the site feature rich. It's just a matter of raising the $2,000 so that I can make all of that happen. So if you want to contribute to the quarter project, feel free to do so in the description box below, either through Give, Send, Go or Flatter. Now we'll stop sharing that. Go ahead and uh, put that there. So now I just got to set up all the Bible verses that we need for the next part of the show. But that's going to take a little bit. 12 verses in total, which means I got to open up Bible Gateway. 12 different times. That's going to be a lot of fun for sure. So far, we're at four. And maybe we can make a song out of this. I don't know. And this is number five. Six. I got my notes all written down here on my notepad on my computer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. 
Yeah, Brett's not here yet. He might pop in at some point later on, but hey, I'll try to entertain you in the meantime, but no promises. Mm -mm, you know, according to some people, I'm just a big dum dum who doesn't know anything about anything. So if I try to entertain you guys, that could go horribly wrong. So hold your breath. But I do see your comments there. I do see Matthew and Morty McFly, and I see Shayla Somerville. Hello, Shayla. And I see Revolver Bernie. Well, that's really interesting. Glad to see you all here. Uh, let's see. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I kind of figured Brett was going to be here at the start, but I guess he's just got some stuff he needs to figure out or that he's got to do. It's okay, Joe John, 24 through 29. Okay, oops, that's not the one I wanted to click on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Matthew 21, okay. So... Yeah, I'm kind of doing this all in one browser. I'm starting to think maybe I should have set up another browser with all these Bible verses. You know, that might have been the smart thing to do, but what do I know? I'm just the master of retrospect. Uh, let's see. Do do okay. Twenty-two. Two, Okay. So now we got some old Testament. Jeremiah seventeen nine through ten. Jeremiah seventeen nine through ten. All right, and then Psalm forty-two. Oh come on. You know, my fingers really need to type today, but they just don't cooperate. And then I think first Kings Yeah, yeah, yeah. 37 through 40. Yeah, that's what the cool people do is they tell you what Bible verses they're gonna look up before they actually bring it up. Okay. Um two, one through twelve. Uh, Isaiah 25. Yep, we're still kicking it. Kicking that Bible addiction by quoting Bible verse. Oh, wait, you know, that's not actually kicking the addiction. Ha! Never mind. I lied. John 10, 22. We're almost done, people. Almost done. I'm almost ready to share what I really wanted to share. Let's see, John 8. I believe that's the one. Yes. And then just one more. Exodus 3. All right. Looks like I got everything set up. I'm ready to present to you. The main serious topic I wanted to present before we get into the open discussion part of the show. So last week I was, I see you there, Livia. I was actually talking to Olivia last week about, uh, well, several things, in fact, mostly centered around creation versus evolution. But there was one part of our discussion where Olivia was genuinely surprised when I brought up that Jesus claimed to be God and that people worshipped him as God and he didn't reject their worship or rebuke them in any way. She was actually quite surprised. So I figured, you know what? This stream would be a good time to go over some of the Bible passages where Jesus claimed to be God and did things that only God can do. And even at one point, he just point blank called himself Yahweh. So we're going to see here for over the next probably 10 minutes or so that Jesus was not an ordinary man, or at best, he at least didn't consider himself to be an ordinary man. Of course, as a Bible-believing Christian, I believe he was not an ordinary man. He was God incarnate, but we're going to see that here as soon as I start sharing the screen again. So let's go ahead, share entire screen, click that button. And then add it to the stream. I wish you would just add it to the stream automatically instead of me having to manually do it. So here we have the passage we brought up uh, before on a different stream. In John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29, we read, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now we see in these last two verses something very interesting. Thomas calls Jesus his Lord and his God, as in capital G God, as in Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament. Does Jesus rebuke him? Does Jesus say to him, dude, I'm just a man. Don't make me out to be God. No. His response to Thomas is, because you have seen me, you have believed. Believed what? You believe that Jesus is God. So Jesus is actually affirming that he's God and basically commending Thomas for believing that he's God. And then Jesus points out that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. In other words, people like me, people like my contemporary Christian brothers and sisters who did not get to live and see Jesus firsthand in the first century. And yet we believe that he is God and we put our trust into him in the form of a personal saving relationship. So Jesus had a perfect opportunity here to say, I'm not God, when Thomas called him his God, and yet Jesus didn't even attempt to rebuke him, didn't even deny he was God. He affirmed that he was God. That was what we looked at uh, the last stream, I believe it was. But let's go into some other more interesting things. Here we have Matthew 21, 14 through 17, where we read the following. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise? And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Now, we notice right here in verse 16 that Jesus is actually quoting from a scripture. The scripture he's quoting from is actually Psalm chapter 8, verses 1 through 2, which says the following. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. So what we see here in Matthew 21, 14 through 17, is that Jesus quotes a psalm where children were praising God and infants were praising God in order to justify allowing children to praise and worship himself in the temple in the first century. Now, if Jesus was just an ordinary man, he would not have done this. But if he considered himself to be God, then his actions here make sense. Why would I tell children to stop worshiping me? They're supposed to worship God. So Matthew 21, 14 through 17 is an instance where Jesus clearly was making an indirect claim to be God. Now, another one I want to look at. Actually, I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment. Ah, there's Brett. Hi, Brett. Hey, just listening to you, doing your thing, man. Sneaky, sneaky, Brett Keen is. I hope you like the overlay. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. Rocking and rolling. Now, anyway, let me get back to where I was. I just knew somehow in the back of my head, Brett's just going to show up. I know he is. <laughs> Oops, uh, wrong button. That's not it. There, that's it. John 2, 23 through 25. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. He did not need any testimony about mankind, for he knew what was in each person. Now, this is very interesting here. It says Jesus knows all people, and he knows what's in 
each person. It's almost like he can see into their hearts. Now, this is very important if you're familiar with the Old Testament because the Old Testament teaches only God can see into people's hearts. But let's not take my word for it. Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. So we see here in this passage that God searches the heart. In Psalm 44, 20 through 22, we read, If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it since he knows the secrets of the heart? Yet for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. So see, we see here, especially in verse 21, that God knows the secrets of the heart. So God examines the heart. He knows the secrets of the heart. Then in 1 Kings 8, 37 through 40, King Solomon says, When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when an enemy besieges them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, and when a prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people Israel, being aware of the afflictions of their own hearts and spraying out their hands towards this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Forgive and act. Deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts. For you alone know every human heart, so that they will fear you all the time they live in the land you gave our ancestors. So according to King Solomon, the man who God himself said is the wisest person who has ever lived and will ever live, God alone knows every human heart. So we know from the Old Testament that God examines human hearts he sees the secrets of the human heart, and he alone knows every human heart. So in John 2, 23 through 25, says that Jesus knows all people and what is in each of them. That is clearly a claim to Jesus being God in human form, because he's able to know all people and see into each of their hearts, which is something only God can do. Now, another fun passage is Mark 2, verses 1 through 12, which is a rather famous story in the Gospels about Jesus and the paralyzed man that was lowered through the roof in front of him because the crowd outside the house that he was in was so crowded that the guys couldn't bring their friend to Jesus, so they had to get a little creative. Well, in this passage, we read, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. So when the man on the mat was lowered through the roof and presented to Jesus, Jesus looked at the man and told him that his sins were forgiven. Now why, oh why, did the teachers of the law who were sitting there in the room think to themselves that Jesus was blaspheming and that only God could forgive sins? There's actually a verse in Isaiah that would have led them to this conclusion. In Isaiah 43, 25, God says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. So the religious leaders of Jesus' time were familiar with this verse. They believed because of this verse that only God can truly forgive someone's sins. And so when Jesus claimed to forgive the sins of the paralyzed man, 
they immediately thought of this verse in Isaiah, and since they didn't want to believe or accept that Jesus was God, they thought he was blaspheming. And so it says here in the passage that this is what they were thinking in their heads, and because Jesus could see into their hearts, he said out loud what they were thinking in their heads. And then he healed them, as we can see in the verse, and from what Jesus said, he healed the man to prove that he had the authority to forgive sins. In other words, he healed the man to prove that he is God. And that's exactly what he did in front of a large crowd of witnesses. And a lot of people were very impressed, to say the least, by this healing. Now, the next passage I'm thinking of is actually found in John 22, or John 10, verses 22 through 33. My mistake. This is actually a very easy one because the explanation is right there in the text. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. So here we see in this passage, Jesus claimed that he and the Father are one. And his listeners picked up stones to stone him because they understood rightly that he was claiming to be God, and they obviously couldn't accept that. And so they were determined to kill him right then and there. So based on the response of his listeners, we know that when Jesus claimed that the Father and him are one, he was claiming to be God. His own audience wanted to kill him because of this. Now, the last example we have of Jesus' claim to deity is actually found in John chapter 8, verses 57 through 59, which says, You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Now, why, oh, why would the listeners of Jesus pick up stones to kill him when he calls himself, I am? Well, let's turn to Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 14, and find out. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So as we can see from Exodus 14 through 14, God literally calls himself, I am, when Moses asks him, What shall I say to the Israelites when they ask who sent me? Who should I say sent me? God called himself I am, which is the English translation of Yahweh. So when Jesus called himself I am in John 8, 58, he was literally claiming to be the same God who spoke to Moses in the burning bush back in Exodus chapter 3. And because the crowd around him was not willing to accept that, they picked up stones to stone him, and Jesus made himself disappear. So as we can see from this whole litany of passages that we just read through in the last several minutes, Jesus was worshipped as God. He accepted people's worship, and he accepted their claim that Jesus was God. When Thomas called him God, he accepted it. We see that Jesus had the attributes of God. We see Jesus performing miracles and doing things only God can say and do. And we even see Jesus literally calling himself Yahweh, the same God who spoke to Moses at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3, the same God who spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapters 17 through 19. So if you're one of these people watching and 
you like to think of Jesus as a nice guy who was about peace and love, and he was a good moral teacher. Jesus did not present himself in this manner to people in the first century in his three-year ministry. Jesus clearly did not consider himself to be a normal human being. He identified himself as the God of the Old Testament. He identified himself specifically as Yahweh so that there was no confusion with his audience. And he said and did only the things Yahweh can say and do. So the best case scenario for people who don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible is that the true Jesus considered himself to be the God of the Old Testament. And then he performed miracles to justify his claim, which some people tried to explain away as Jesus being trained in the sorcery of the Egyptians. And that's what he used to betray himself as God. The worst case scenario for people who don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible is that Jesus was exactly who he claimed to be, which is the great I am, the Yahweh of the Old Testament. He was not a mere man. He was not merely a good teacher. He was God in the flesh. And the reason why he came to the earth in the first century, lived a sinless life, and did a three-year ministry, and then was sentenced to death on a cross, is because he was paying the price for the sins of all mankind, past, present, and future. So that when his sacrifice is applied to the sin ledger of those who accept the offer of forgiveness that God gives them, his sacrifice will literally pay, make payment for all the sins that person has committed. I'm extremely thankful for that because my sin ledger is long and ugly. Most people's sin ledger is long and ugly. So I'm very, very thankful that Jesus did that for us. But it's pretty obvious who Jesus claimed to be. And so my parting thought on this subject is, if you're going to accept or reject Jesus, you should accept or reject him as he really is and as he claimed to be. And clearly the Jesus of the Bible claimed to be God in human form, and he also claimed to be very exclusive. After all, John 14, 6 through 7, Jesus said that he was the way and the truth and the life, and that there was no other way to God but through him. So if we're going to accept or reject Jesus, let's accept or reject him based on who and what he really is and not what you want him to be. And that's all I have to say on that subject. Is there anything you'd like to add, Brett? Well, there's uh, quite a few times, and you pointed out a passage where the disciples and the people who are following, they actually call him God and Lord. And the fact that he doesn't try to correct them or tell them, no, that's not the case, because if he wasn't God and he was some something else, just a mere human, he would have informed them that would have been a form of blasphemy of some sort, I would suspect. But no, that's one of the reasons why they crucified him in the first place and tested him over and over because they believed that he was claiming to be uh, the God of the Old Testament. So good passages, great teaching. That's also another good point, because if Jesus was really this nice guy who was all about peace and love and harmony and all this stuff, you have a really big problem because you have to figure out, well, if he was just that, why did they kill him? But since we see that he was claiming to be the Yahweh of the Old Testament and they refused to accept that, it makes the reason why they killed him much more understandable than the alternative is that John uh, Gashilla, your friend that I'm seeing down there? It might be, or it might be somebody doing a video loop. That's why it's best to say, John, can you give us the middle finger or wave at us? Uh, John, can you give us a thumbs up with your left hand if that's really you? Yeah. See? It's a loop. What they do is they like to, they're going to probably one day get a clip of you and loop it, make it appear as though it's you so they can do that. Yeah, he would have given us something right off the bat. Yeah, I think this would have been... The, there we go. <laughs> I yeah, think that I would have been the time. I banned it. The name even said Von Helton under it. Ah, okay. Well, that, that's a good giveaway. Uh, if Olivia's still watching, you're welcome to join too, since we had such a lovely discussion last time. Uh, and anyone else who's watching, if you're for real... You're welcome to join us and talk about whatever. You just got to go to the link that's in the description box and in the chat. 
While we're waiting for people to join, Brett, uh, what do you think about? Oh, there's Olivia. Hello. Hi, Olivia. So I was just going to ask you, Brett, uh, since we're here, uh, what do you think about this whole Elon Musk taking over Twitter thing? It seems like that's all anyone wants to talk about in the internet this week. I just Is hope, really? obviously, obviously, he's not going to run in Twitter all by himself, which apparently some people think. I hope that uh, whoever he hires to run the thing while he's doing everything else he does uh, believes in freedom of speech as much as he does. As long as that's the case, then we're good to go. I think it'll definitely be a big improvement because a lot of the people who work for Twitter, they're clearly uh, weak, fragile type of liberals, snowflakes is what I call them, who can't handle ideas that are different than their own. So I'm looking forward to seeing the future of mankind as far as social media goes. Yeah, they are definitely some special kind of snowflakes, those people working at Twitter. Because literally all Elon Musk said was, I'm going to level the playing field so that everyone is on equal footing and can say their piece. And their response is, oh, what tyranny. Ah! <laughs> no, we can't have an even playing field. That's not fair. <laughs> I got shut down several times on Twitter. have over 15 accounts that got shut down simply for correcting people's assertions and claims about Donald Trump. As you know, I was... Uh, in love with this guy on how he was doing things and people would lie all damn day on there and i would put something up i'd get lots and lots of views but and it was just simply no right here's a resource this is what he actually said this is what i remember when they used to make things up about what he supposedly like oh he's gonna take social security he's gonna take disability away from people mm -hmm. and i put up a clip where it says no i will not do this no matter what blah 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 and this got me shut down losing accounts right or like when he called uh jim uh kim jong-un rocket man over and over on twitter and everyone's like oh no he's gonna start world war three and north korea is gonna start nuking us and Next thing you know, he's got uh, Kim Jong-un and the leader of South Korea sitting down for peace talks. <laughs> exactly. That was, so, that was so funny when it happened. I, I honestly couldn't stop laughing. It's like, oh, yeah, there's the real dictator right there starting peace talks. What a horrible man. <laughs> That's right. So what you been up to, Olivia? Oh, working. I worked today in the afternoon, got off at about six, and then I'll go back tomorrow at Five in the morning. Wow. Early rise, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I kind of, well. I but guess on I that get... day, I, I'm picking up for a coworker. I'm helping out. And so I only have to be there until like 930. And then I have a weekend. Ooh, short day. Just short in day. The All in the a.m. All in the a.m., yes. Then you can get a nap in and then you can have your weekend party. No, I'll just sit at home. I don't party. Uh, uh, well, you know, different people define party differently, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, what's been on your mind lately, Olivia? Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking about, I mean, we, you know, we could talk about what's, what you would put on there. And I had thought several different things, like, um, but they all relate probably to the larger question of if Jesus said he was God, then why was he referencing God outside of himself? Like there is no way to the father than through me. Hmm. When if he was referring to himself as God, he was like, there's no way to me except through me. You're talking to me. I'm God. He wouldn't have said it like when you know what I mean? That's not referencing himself as god obviously that's referencing a different entity as god and you don't call yourself your own father you know what i mean so there's that yeah so in 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 one sense you want to say that he's claiming to be god but then there's obviously he's referencing an entity that isn't him when referencing god or like when he's on the cross why have you forsake God? Why have you forsaken me? He's not saying, why have I forsaken myself? He wouldn't be worried at all. He wouldn't be forsaken. He wouldn't have uttered the phrase. 
Well, that's where the doctrine of the Trinity comes in, because when you study the scriptures, Jesus actually said quite a few interesting things. One is he talked about God the Father and the Holy Spirit as being different persons from himself. But then in other mm-hmm. instances, he said that they all have the same name. He said that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The all Holy have Spirit the same being mother. Name. Right. So Holy Spirit is mother then. Mm, well, you quite. can't have a father and a son without a mother. Like, that's how you, I mean, the church, I mean, people might, patriarchy is what it is. And why aren't we calling mother, mother? That's, I guess, maybe a different conversation. Because you can't, like, if you're going to set up the dynamic of a triad with father and son, then we already obviously know what the other entity is. It's mother. To finish fathers and mothers make sons. Yeah, TTOR and Olivia. TTOR, I don't know if you remember, and we'll definitely hit what you're talking about, Olivia, but remember for a while there, I was having an issue with this, and you showed me a whole bunch of stuff. Well, I went and did a bunch of research. I not only wanted to find out if Jesus was God, but I also wanted to find out was he actually spoken about in the Old Testament. You didn't share this one, TTOR, but if uh, a person who's been studying the Bible as long as you have looks at this, here, let me put it up on the screen for you there. Read this and uh, tell me what you think. This is from the Old Testament, Olivia. Mm-hmm. Look at this. This mm-hmm. is before Jesus even existed. What does that say? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, so does either one of you know what Emmanuel means back in the language that was uh, written on this? It ba- I think it basically means God among us. There you go. Yeah, my memory's a little rusty, mm-hmm. but apparently I got lucky. <laughs> well, yeah. But anyway, well, I wanted to finish my thought because when you also study the scriptures, it talks about Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, each of them having the divine attributes of God. They all have the same attributes of omniscience and omnipresence and all of that stuff. And so when you look at all of that, when you look at those passages where it says that all three have the same divine attributes, you look at Jesus saying that all three have the same name. It's pretty obvious from those that obviously God has one divine nature But Jesus also talked about himself, God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit as being distinct persons from each other. Because when he was on the earth in the first century, he said the Father was in heaven. And when Mm -hmm. he was talking to his disciples, he said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit later on after I've left this earth. So the mother. So they were were mother. three different persons. I want to get around from, I don't want to let go of this. Why are we calling the mother Holy Spirit? What, why, why is that important? Well, because, hold you know, on one second. We got some people I'm backstage. Almost. Is that the real Vecal? Yep, it's me. How you doing? All right. All right. Uh, is that the real Von Helton? If so, <clears throat> give me the double cross that we, uh, he knows the code. Now nah, that's not. That's damaged. a loop. Uh, yeah. That's a ban. That person's account will forever be locked out. All right. Hey, Beckel, how you doing? Continue on, guys. I, I just wanted to finish up by pointing out that the whole mother thing is irrelevant. The point of the scripture well, is I'm not irrelevant. Bringing, to what I'm bringing up, it is. Because what I'm pointing out is that the scriptures teach a God that is three distinct persons, but one divine nature, which is the whole concept that is behind the doctrine of the Trinity. It comes straight from the Bible. And that's how you understand all the different things that Jesus said. That's how all the different things that so seem three confusing people one person. make sense. Well, saying three people can equal one person is confusing, yes. And well, also God, it's confusing to well, God, say that uh, you can get a father and a son without a mother. It's well, confusing. God, I, yeah, but God also says in the Old Testament that he's not like anything in creation. So the fact that there's nothing well, in creation. The father and the son and this mysterious other thing. Because there's nothing in creation that is three distinct persons with one nature. Well, obviously, that would support the idea that God's nature is different than anything. Well, we see maybe in this it's reality. a committee. So God is a committee. 
mm-hmm. like they're voting in their you know god mind and then that's the action they take as a solidified unit a committee god is a committee a family. God is a family unit. It, got, it sounds like to me like a, a united family front. So mother, father, son. If you want to say that the Holy Spirit fulfills some kind of mother role, I guess I can. Well, I mean, that, why wouldn't it? If well, well, you're the, if, if God the Himself, Holy, the Holy God Spirit is setting is, up the dynamic, explaining it as father and son, right? Nothing in scripture. That's that God's I, language. There's nothing. So in father. Scripture. There's nothing in scripture that describes the that attributes uh, the Holy Spirit to having female attributes or as a well, of course it does. If you're gonna no, describe no, father no, and no, son, that's no. that's a family unit, no, right? No, that's, so that's there's false. some father you, male, mother is the female part, they have a that. child that's Jesus. No, no, that's false. You could say that if you what? want to, but, it's, but it doesn't line up with what's laid out in scripture. That it, it, it clearly um, we know that it the word lays out logic. Uh, you you know, can't do that. God, God is a logical no, thing. We know, we know that the word uh, "spirit" in the Greek is I, I want to say "pneuma," which is which is actually a feminine, but it doesn't attribute the Holy Spirit as a female. Not that it matters anyway, because the fe- you know we're not. Well, then why he has got male for God? No, God is keep, a male in outer. But you keep asserting that the Holy Spirit is a female when you don't. Oh, have yes. To- it's but, a family but, unit. But, but you're not, but you're not, hold on, hold on, let me finish. Hold on. But what you're not doing though, is you're not pointing out to anything in scripture. You're just making assertions, but you're not backing it up with scripture. And that's what you're not autistic. You. I'm not autistic. I didn't, I I'm didn't just going to autistic. say, no. I said that you, I didn't say you're autistic. You don't have I'm to be could, autistic to do that though. I'm saying yeah, yeah, a little Olivia, bit autistic. The best way to be able to solve your problem is if yeah. you're going to make a biblical claim yeah. with a bunch of theists, you got to do something called open the book, blow the cobwebs no, no, off no, that no. Bible. The, the Bible, and, uh, if you're claiming the, it makes sense, no, if Olivia, you're going to use the family yeah, analogy. Olivia, you just, right now, it just sounds like you're throwing something out there. No. Yes, you are. Father. Son, and then there's a third thing. Olivia, Olivia. remember That's what mother. we talked about? Uh, You're making claims. You have passages and verses to back mm-hmm. up. Exactly. That's, that's that's just it's, how it works. It's, it's, it's that father, father it's mother, son. That's, that's just no, that's not, not how, how it works. works. You have of course, to back that's up how it works. No, no, that's not how it works. Huh? Uh, yes, I, I'd like no, to add my no, like add my two cents in here. I understand where you're coming from, Olivia. I understand that it makes sense to you to think of the Holy Spirit as being a mother. And if you could actually open up the Bible and provide scripture that clearly indicates that in right. some way that the well, Holy Spirit's a mother, we would accept your argument. But exactly. the problem we're That's having right. is that no such verse exists. Right. That's why yeah. we can't go there. <laughs> Does it mean to it to the analogy is, is built by God. God well, made the no, analogy. No, no, you're making it up. Uh, Tio, uh, no. say this too. God made up the analogy oh, of a family. Olivia. Father is God's identity. Wait, hold on, Olivia. In the and Bible, son uh, is Jesus's identity, right? Well, hold on. Uh, uh, Brett brought up Isaiah chapter seven, which actually is a direct link to Matthew chapter one, which regarding uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. It's funny that you bring that up, Brett, because uh, in that chapter uh, we clearly see that the Holy Spirit would overshadow Mary, and that's how she would conceive Jesus, right? So it's the Holy Spirit that's uh, supernaturally intervening. And making her conceive the uh, Christ in her womb. So we say that this is some sort of a, a lesbian uh, relationship, you know, between a female spirit. Oh, and no, a you're going to say this, <laughs> that, that the triad it's, it's is the three gay men. And, and, and I mean, secondly, if you if it's if it's three, if it's father, and secondly, son, and some and other dude. And secondly, and secondly, hold on, I was is, say, hold on, let me finish this up real quick. That was pretty funny. The other thing is too that in the Greek the the word overshadow is uh, I think it's episkiazo which, which simply means of uh, an in, a supernatural or preternatural interaction. So there was no physical uh, aspect or physical uh, uh, touching of the woman uh, as a lot of the Mormons would like to teach. It doesn't uh, this man or woman, then does it? There's no physical. So he didn't have to touch it. Just, he just spoke it. He just spoke it, just like he did with the universe. He spoke it, and it happened. Bam. So, so, so we can see CA Productions in the comment section saying using the Bible to prove the Bible is ridiculous. Now, what we've been trying to do, at least that's what I've been thinking we're trying to do in this stream so far, is we're trying to use the Bible to prove that the Bible teaches something. 
There's nothing ridiculous about that at all. Amen. Just wanted Amen. to throw that out there. Yeah. I love how uh, CC over here, uh, you've heard non-believers make this claim. Christians can't even agree. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good that Christians actually have different views. That would definitely take away from the claim that atheists make that we're sheep and we're all like the boys. You mean, you mean we don't have a thing. hive mind? What? Yes. We actually <laughs> think for ourselves. How about that? It's called independent thinking. How about yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. It originated from God. Yeah, so, Olivia, you could solve this problem in less than two minutes by just simply giving the information that you got this from, and then voila. I got it from God's own analogy, and I can oh, use my brain geez. that God made. She's using you the can't logic claim she has. father and son, and then there's a third thing. You're going to say it's on three guys. God is three guys. Okay, so are you going to provide well, the information? What you got? What's that's, going on? The Old Testament trees, women. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's that's that's right, yeah. So women are half the population, and you're saying that yeah. God represents is just no. There's no women. Yeah, God. Yeah. Olivia, why is it so difficult to just give us a reference or story? Yeah, I don't have a reference. I yeah, wouldn't well, believe in such a God. I know you she just like to make the claims, but you don't want to back I, it up. I know that God wants me to believe in them. Olivia, you're making claims that you can't support. No, I'm That's making demands. I'm just if, saying, if, if God wants me, to, me to believe in a God, mother Olivia, is the other wanna... one. Olivia, if you want to say that's your opinion or that's how you view it, okay, fine. We're not going to argue with you. Except yeah. for, but when you make it a dogmatic and a positive claim, now you you have the onus on you to back it up, and you're not able to do that. No, I don't. Why would yes, I have to do. back it up? Yes, that's the logical way no, no, to no, no, believe no, the Bible. No, absolutely false. No, anybody, whether you're a theist or not, any claim that you make, if it's positive, you automatically have the onus on you to, to validate it. And no. you fail physically in doing so. Yes, you have. I don't believe that. No, but well, you better go look up some logic then, because that's that's basic logic, lady. No disrespect. No, of course we're not going to say we believe in magic. No, but, but then, we're not going to believe in illogic like what, what you're. You said the magic. Like God you spoke said, magic in the womb. You said you made a claim, you and you're not able to substantiate it. So that's the problem here. I'm able to substantiate my claims. But you are not able to substantiate your What claim. is substantiate? Like, what claims are we substantiating? You know what substantiate? None of us can substantiate that All magic right, exists. I wanted to uh, substantiate that claim, I'll leave you. You wanted to time out, time out. <laughs> None of us can substantiate any of these claims. Is these that true? Claims. Is that true? Is that true? Let's, let, let's give Wildheart a chance to offer his opinion yeah. or thoughts on okay. interrupted. Yeah, I just wanted to defend Olivia. Basically, if the, word, if the Greek word uh, for spirit is effeminate, and the Greek word spirit is in the Bible. So that is evident from the Bible that the spirit is a woman, I would say. Well, the fact, well, this answers the mysteries of the universe. Every time spirits <laughs> mention the Bible, it must be a female or a lesbian. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what Veckel brought up earlier. Yes, if we want to yeah. go that yeah. route, then yeah, Mary yeah. Mary conceived Jesus through holy spiritual lesbian relations. Wildheart, right. do me a favor. <laughs> say it. Say it. I want you to say, "I am Duncan McLeod of the Clan McLeod. There can only be one." <laughs> I am Duncan McLeod of the Cloud Clan. Yeah. <laughs> <There can laughs> one. Okay. Now do me another favor, uh, a Wildheart. Put your hand in front of your face, and then. Slap yourself silly with the <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, right. he, he wants to be able to talk <laughs> later, so. <laughs> yeah. A again, uh, I'll say it again. Uh, anybody who makes a claim, uh, a positive claim, no matter who it's coming from, you have, uh, by logic, you automatically have the onus on yourself to substantiate it. Uh, even It doesn't matter if whether or not people agree with you. The fact of the matter is you can't engage in a philosophical, an intel intelligent discussion and make such claims that they put the onus on the person that you're having this argument with when you're the one making a positive claim. If I tell you that I know that God exists, now I have an obligation to prove that to you, or at least to make some sort of convincing argument. Whether you disagree with it or not, the fact of the matter is I have that obligation upon myself. Same thing with an atheist. If an atheist is saying that no God exists, you don't pull this 1993 atheist apologetic nonsense that's been debunked so many times and say, ah, 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 you're the theist. Therefore, you, by default, have to prove to me that your God exists. No, it doesn't work that way. If you're making a positive claim, you have the onus on you to validate it, period. 
Yep, that which is, is why when I started out the show by saying Jesus was God, I spent the next 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was, pulling out the scriptures and showing Jesus doing and saying and claiming to be God. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. so, and if, I made claim that, if I made the claim that God didn't exist, uh, yeah, Beckles was right, actually. Does Rob Reed want to join this conversation? It would be nice. Rob's got a good voice, and he does a lot of uh, biblical videos. So if yeah, he right. came in, he'd definitely add to the uh, the awesome equation. We'll figure out if uh, lesbian Jesus is a thing, according to Olivia. <laughs> lesbian Jesus lesbian, and lesbian well, he, tables. He didn't get married, did he? Or have any kids? Doesn't mean he was a lesbian. He, he did hang around with an awful lot of sailors. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but okay, let's get back to this other thing. Why does God need to have a blood sacrifice to himself to forgive us? That makes no sense. You got to like that. That sounds like witchcraft a little bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How is, uh, how is the spilling of blood equal to witchcraft? Um, black magic, you use human blood, God blood, whatever, and it performs a miracle, a magic, and you have a ceremony or whatever. And, you know, when I went to church, they would like, let's bathe in the blood of Jesus, you know, you know, you eat his body and blood, right? Wow. That's the communion. You're eating the body of Christ and the drinking his blood is the wine, you know, that's transubstantiation friends. Catholic. And um, that's witchcraft, isn't it? And that the oh, whole idea that's that symbolism as well. That's what Catholicism teaches, but Jesus the, himself actually used. That's symbolism. what Baptists he never, teach. He never meant it to be literal. Right, right. No, so his blood literally didn't matter. His death didn't matter. What is it? I mean, what what is the claim? As so far like, as did, your as far the as blood your, sacrifice. Uh, Why did God need a blood sacrifice? Was it important or was wait, it not? Wait, one important? question at a time. I mean, you're asking a bunch of questions. Yeah, don't don't jump okay. around. Don't do the gish gallop. Don't, don't do that. Okay. Was blood sacrifice important? Well, yes, and that's why Jesus came. He was the ultimate blood sacrifice, the last one that was ever needed. And that's what the whole point of the Last Supper was. The wine they were drinking, Jesus told them, represented his blood. The bread that they were sharing, he told them, represented his body. And that was one of the two rituals that Jesus established for his followers to do until the day he comes back to establish his kingdom. Jesus was what is special the last about sacrifice. blood. What's special about blood sacrifice? Is there magic in it? Like, what is the claim as far as that goes? It's the currency that pays for your sins. Blood? How is it currency? How? What? In what sense? In the spiritual? Like, what is it? Witchcraft? Like, how does that work? What is magic about blood? Who said anything about magic? What? What is she well, talking? That, about? It, well, well, that's magic. Well, that's if it's compelling you, God to forgive you, <laughs> it's magic. Why you keep saying magic? Because it has supernatural <laughs> currency. If God said that in order for your sins to be given, you just had to. Uh, have a money sacrifice and pay him like ten thousand dollars once a year. Would Catholic. that be easier for you to accept? Yeah, because that's basically how, than, that's uh, basically uh, how God uses blood. blood. Blood is a well, currency. Uh, yeah, didn't didn't the Catholics uh, do that with uh, the indulgences? Uh, uh, well, I just wanted to make sense. Like, why is blood important? What's so special about blood? Because blood is life. You don't have life without it. No, if you, no, if you're dead. <laughs> not you know, you don't have a lot of things you'll die. magic, do you? No, but I want to know what's special about blood. Why does well, it's why a does... life force? That's how they seen it, and apparently doctors seem to think the same way because they use it to keep people alive. Well, yeah, yeah, there's humans, lots of things to keep people alive. alive without blood, so or yeah. air, or food, or water. So what? But, what does God do with the blood? Well, once he has it, well, he's the currency. What what does he use it for? What is blood, baby? Don't hurt me. You know what I mean? Is it supernatural, like they show on TV, where the blood gives something powers? Like, is it a spell? Is oh. it a, like what was? It sounds like a spell. Yeah, no, it's just used as a currency because, to my understanding of the Bible, the blood itself wasn't used for anything after it was sacrificed to the Lord. It's just there. So how is it a currency then? If you can't spend it or exchange it. Well, it's not for us to spend. It's for God. Yeah, but God can't spend it either. God into that. He doesn't need to spend it. 
Well, it's not currency then. That's not the only point. Well, it makes payment for our sins. But that was the whole point of Jesus doing his sacrifices so that we don't have to do animal blood sacrifices again. Right. It's just, with the currency, you can almost spend it as well. If it's only but one he could have just forgiven us, right? Because he's God. Sin has to be punished, though. You can't leave it unpunished. Well, who says that? Why does sin have to be punished? If God were to just sweep it under the rug and say you're forgiven, then the sin is not dealt with. And that would be God unjust because he ignored crime. He ignored sin. And God says he don't I do can that. do that, though. I, I can forgive someone without a blood sacrifice. So if God can't, then I can do something that God can't, and surely that should be impossible. Well, that's true. If if God is all powerful, then God should be able to forgive without a blood sacrifice, seeing as how humans can forgive without blood sacrifice. Well, that's exactly what's going on now. Now you just have to believe in Jesus and have a personal relationship with him and you're golden. No blood sacrifice required. So now that that demand of yours has been met, go ahead and convert. Well, I could don't well, I, require I don't my... I don't require to forgive. I don't require people to worship me or be tormented. It's a, You have free will. You can choose to accept the offer of forgiveness God gives you and the salvation he offers, or you can reject it and live your own life. You're it's not, not much of a gift, it. is it? How is if it there's conditions, it's not a gift. It's a condition. It's a contract. Yeah. Well, worship, I, I don't know if you've ever looked up. For some reason, non-believers, when they think of worship, they think of people on their knees going, oh, no, 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 no. no, it means revere, to respect, to honor. Why wouldn't you? Don't you honor your mother and father? Don't you honor those that assisted in your existence? I mean, I guess. My mother and father have never committed genocide, though, so there's a difference there. Um, so, Wild Heart, if someone were to, when you were living with your parents, if someone broke into your home and your parents wanted to make it to where the threat doesn't get to you and they stopped them, would you uh, consider them unloving all of a sudden or that they're evil for protecting you? No, from... that would be self defense. Ah, okay. There's the genocide <laughs> stuff all over again. It's always the genocide. Uh, yeah. Woe is me. Well, genocide is bad, and, and slavery is bad, and, and okay, a lot of things are bad that are in the Bible. Let, let's roll with the genocide example. I want to lay out a scenario. So you got a group of people who, for hundreds of years, have been having sex with animals, sacrificing their children on the altar of a god called Moloch, and practicing all kinds of sexual, incestual relationships, and they've been doing this unrepentantly for hundreds of years, and anyone who's ever tried calling them to repent or change, they just blatantly ignored if they didn't outright kill. At some point, if there's a God out there who claims to be just and claims to not allow this kind of stuff to go on, wouldn't you want him to actually put a stop to it at some point? No, that that, that kills me, that. Uh, th that tribe over there, the killing all the children, go and kill them, including the children and the animals. How does that make any sense? That's war rhetoric. If you actually study the Bible, you'll see that not all the Canaanites were wiped uh, out in all those instances. Yeah, and, and they, got, they were they still did, around um, at the time of yeah. Jesus, even. Yeah, but God went mad because he didn't kill them all. He gave direct orders to kill them all, including the animals. Well, and they're, 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 what PPR was saying, though, uh, many, in many of these instances, I know that atheists, when they read the Bible, they don't even notice the time difference of the age of the person that's being talked about. But literally hundreds of years go by where <clears throat> men of God as well as women are warning people and telling people, look, God does not want this. Or God himself is directly through some manifestation saying, you need to stop what you're doing or there's going to be consequences. Now, what do you expect him to do if he just sits there and keeps letting them do it? Then the atheist is going to go, oh, look, where's your God at when the evil's going on? But, of course, if God does something, he's damned if he do, damned if he don't. Which is it that you want? Do you want the justice? Well, or do you want him yeah. to let everything yeah. fly? Justice, yeah. How, how is killing, like, a child or an animal justice for something that adults have done? What did the child do? Are you saying the child, every child was evil, like one-year-old one year and two-year-olds were evil, and they deserve to die as well? 
It's a good thing the Bible teaches the concept of the age of accountability, which starts yeah, around 12 or 13 sure years old. Yeah. Well, that, that's up for debate, actually. Well, it's not over the edge of one. Well, the age of I mean, accountability certainly sense. doesn't start at one to five years old, that's for sure. That's yeah, right. not what the right. Right. Teach, that's debatable in Christianity. That's why some Christian groups do infant baptism because of original sin. What? Yeah, all humans are born evil and will go to hell unless they're saved, including infants. Well, yeah. Well, I, mean, I, 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 I don't. Well, I don't believe that babies will go to hell. Well, I mean, that's I the age of accountability. There's an age where God doesn't hold you accountable for your sin, but up when you reach this certain age, whether it be 11, 12, 13, or whatever it's older it's age you want to say. Yeah. There's an age where God actually starts holding you accountable for your sins. But when you're a small child under 10, God doesn't hold you accountable for the sins you commit. Hold on. I'm going to let you that or TTOR uh, talk to you guys about this because I'm going to go have a smoke. But there's a perfect example of the age of accountability that you speak of, TTOR. And I'm sure Vakal also remembers on this. You guys should point this out. Remember yeah. what happened to King David's baby. What did God say uh, through King David and his people? What happened with the baby? I'll be right back. Yeah, uh, what, that wasn't the baby's fault, though. That The baby being killed was the result of David's sin. Uh, so it, the baby wasn't being held accountable for anything that it did. Uh, so, but my question is, uh, because, I mean, the Bible doesn't specifically point out the age of accountability. However, I don't necessarily disagree with uh, what TTOR is saying, uh, but the point is, uh, my point is that the Bible is not specific on that particular age, uh, but could it be around, you know, somewhere between, starting at between 10 and 12? It, possibly, but the Bible is just not clear on it. I, th I, I think we can all agree it's not like one to two years old. It cannot be that. Well, of course right. not. So if a one to two year old, why? Why that child is going to heaven. Why? I, I think... Yeah, I'm, no, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying that the Bible is not clear on what the age is, though. That's the thing. I mean, same but why thing can't it be one? The, the same thing with the mentally ill person. I mean, is, is God going to send someone who's mentally uh, incapable of understanding the gospel to hell because they're not able to un intellectually understand it? Yes, God I, is. Uh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. If you have a scripture, well, then that why were that, they created to begin with? If you have a, if you have scripture that proves that God is going to send people to hell who are intellectually unable uh, to understand who Christ is, uh, I would are like to see humans? that humans? So you're I, saying you're not human, ma'am? I want to see the verse. You are talking to a Christian. They're humans. They mean, you are talking in to what a, way? Ma'am, so you're, you're talking, saying not all humans need Jesus. Ma'am, you're talking to a student of the Bible. So if you well, want to make okay. an assertion about something biblical, I'm going to challenge you on it and ask you. Where's the accept you're Here saying there's a, exception? I want contextual evidence. There's a scripture that talks about the concept of the age of accountability. Isaiah yeah. 7, 15 through 16. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose right. the right. Yeah. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be right. laid waste. So yeah, obviously there is a point where he becomes accountable for yeah. his no, rejection there. of right and choosing evil or rejecting wrong. No disagreement right. there. But that doesn't yeah. tell you how old this person right. is. Though. That, that's the thing. That's my point. And there is, yeah, and there is some discussion. Things. And the stuff I've read yeah. about it usually points out like the age of like, 12 yeah. to 13 years old see i don't i don't I, I think it could be younger it could be sure uh, but now, I, don't know, baby, I don't know they'll be younger than like 10 though yeah I'm well not sure so, at all yeah I, I agree with that but again the yeah. bible doesn't point this out specifically it doesn't right. that's why we have to teach our children from day from day one to the to know the ways of the lord mm -hmm. you know just in case there is some sort of uh culpability on the kids part you know, uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe a child who dies in the womb or who is aborted uh, is going to go to hell like some Calvinists do. So I, I, I vehemently disagree with that nonsense. Why uh, would that be, though? Why, why would that be wrong? Because um, I think uh, we are all saved in the same way that the people in the Old Testament were saved by God's grace. 
And yeah. uh, I, even though um, I will say there are some aspects to God's name. But the, they had law back then. Our grace is Jesus. There. Yeah. Right. So the grace is Jesus. So before Jesus, there uh, was no grace. Okay, that's that's fine. But but Jesus is God incarnate. So when we're okay. saying grace, we're talking about God in general, in a generic. So you're sense. carving. I'm saying you're. I'm just pointing out you're carving out exceptions to where it's unjust for God to punish. Where I'm no. saying no. Well, you're uh, saying it's unjust nothing. for God to punish a mentally retarded person. It, it, no. Well, I'm not saying it would be unjust for God to do that. I'm just simply saying what God. Uh, has demonstrated according to his scripture, according to the scripture. Okay. That's why we say, when we say regarding the age of accountability, uh, I can't disagree with what was stated by TTR. However, all I'm challenging is the specific age number. It, it, the Bible doesn't point that out, but I mean, that could be the case. I don't know. And there may be no age that it comes to is what you also said in that if they don't ever develop a cognitive talk, enough wow. cognitively to understand punishment and right and wrong that they aren't ever going to be held accountable. Well, if a, if a person is saved only by the intelligent understanding of the gospel and who Jesus Christ is, um, then, I, you know, then, then all children are going to hell then. Okay. But well, we know that that is what it is, is, right? The so, case, you no know, person, people are ultimately saved by the grace of God, by God's grace in the same way. That's that universalism. People, uh, no, uh, no, no, it's not universalism. Universalism teaches that everyone is going to heaven be, despite the fact that they, uh, you know, their relationship with, with God, whether they rejected Jesus Christ or not, they're well, going to heaven ultimately. And that the Bible well, rejecting, let's leave out the people who say, I reject good. Okay, but, but okay. we're not, but here's, a, here's a problem though. We're, we're talking about this too, that you're making a category mistake. We're talking about on one side, people who outright reject, they hear the gospel and they reject it. The other side I'm saying is that people who are either ignorant of it, but see, even in that category, God still has the authority and the power and ability to provide grace onto those individuals and bring uh, apostles and preachers, evangelists, or even himself to these people so that they do believe. Can I just make a point before you get off the topic? Yeah, the people uh, who lived in North America during the time of Jesus, they couldn't have heard it. How do you know? As, that? as far as the mentally ill go, it do, the Bible does say that everyone who doesn't believe it is a fool. Would that not to it? Uh, yeah, no, that's that's the, that's talking about the issue of theism. Uh, that's not talking about uh, so, uh, salvation or soteriology. You, you're you're talking about fools, yeah, but, that, but, yeah. Be, in the Psalm like, Psalm fifty Psalm fourteen and Psalm fifty three only say that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. It's not saying anything about salvation or Jesus Christ. It's just talking about the existence of God. Well, That's it's it. talking about the state of their mind, which would be would yeah. You're, be, you're it's just basically you're saying if you're a fool, fool if you say simple. that there is no God. Yeah, it's simple. Not, like you got some kind of mental illness, haven't you? Some kind of mental. Wait, wait. What, what about mental illness? What? If if you're a fool, then you, it could be said that you are mentally. I don't want to say retarded, but retarded. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but uh, no, no, there, no. there are some scholars. Like, yeah. They might they might uh, in a ridiculing fashion uh, resort to that minor reason, but I don't I don't know. I would just, you know, ask like, okay, if there's a certain threshold, how do we know where that threshold of understanding is? And does any human ever meet that threshold of nearly understanding the complexity of these questions? Yeah, the, because they don't make a lot of sense. They're, you, the you, only do you know business what I mean? thing you have as a human being is if you're a professing believer of Christ is to minister unto these people. Uh, and if they reject the message that you're preaching to them, you dust the sand off your feet and move on. Now, what does that mean, though? Uh, to dust the sand off your feet and move on? No. What is it? What does it mean to 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 be what to have a belief in Christ? What does that even mean? I think TTOR has said it um, many times already today. Is it just to say I believe in Jesus? No, or is it to the, do what Jesus said to do? Even like, the demons believe in Jesus. No, Jesus took it much further. He said you had to have a okay. personal relationship with him. What does that mean? Saved. Does that mean do what Jesus did? Or does that mean just say it? You have to repent of your sins. Turn your back on them. Turn your completely around. Bend your knee mm -hmm. to Jesus and basically submit to him. 
Mm-hmm. Well, these are just platitudes, though. What what yeah. actionable things should what behavior should we see? You have hey, to you submit have a personal to relationship him. with someone you've never spoken to or met. I don't know why you have a personal relationship. Are you saying you've actually spoken to Jesus? Right. You Would you be a, a traveling well, we're missionary? Supposed to, we're supposed to speak to Jesus. I know, but Would you be giving back. to the people poor? Wait, like, how can we determine who a Christian is? That's not your business. Your bus- The only reason that the only business that you have on determining who's a Christian or not is if, number one, they're in your congregation professing to be one or and or number two, if you're involved in some sort of ministry with them. OK, no, no, no we should be no, able to identify no, what on, Christians on, look like. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, well, well, only in certain cases you need to know that. Like, for example, if I want to if I want to worship with uh, somebody who professes to be a Christian. OK, but they're they tell me that they're believing in something unbiblical. Well, either I have to accept one of two things, either they're accepting this out of complete ignorance or they're wolf in sheep's clothing. Either way, because they don't believe like I do with the scriptures, I'm either just going to separate myself from them or if they are in extreme heresy, I'll have to mark and avoid them and call them out and make them out to be heretics before the church. Isn't it like nonsense? So like a rich person. But, if, but let's say the person is in, is in <laughs> ignorance, right? He's he's He has a sincere basic belief in Jesus Christ, but he has a sincere ignorance of a particular area of doctrine. That doesn't mean that he or she is not saved. It just means that they're in error in a particular uh, part of um, one of the tenets of Christianity. Uh, so that's not for me to judge them in that particular area. Now, if they're flat out saying that Jesus never died, I can I have every right to say that this person's a heretic and we need mm-hmm. to avoid them. But if it's an issue with like speaking in tongues or um, pre-trib versus post-trib, annihilationism versus ECT, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I think that's or a, how about can can I be rich? Can I be really rich? You can be rich. And be a Christian. Yeah. No, you can't. The Jesus even said oh, you can't be rich. Oh. Of course you can be rich. You can be rich if you don't let it control you. It's not what, what was it? An eye of the camel. Yeah. So what is that verse? It is more likely it. for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than to get for the rich person to get in heaven. Jesus wasn't saying there's a no. slight possibility. It's like it's impossible. You no. can't be rich and follow oh, me. Oh, Give away I all your wealth. It means it gets. Give away all your wealth. Jesus mentions you can't be rich several times. The person he was talking to, though, right before he said that, was a rich person who put his trust in his riches ultimately and not God. And so what Jesus did to flesh him out on that was to tell him, get rid of all your possessions and then come follow me. And the guy walked away because he wasn't willing to do that. He valued his riches more than he valued having Jesus. Get to the poor, don't hoard wealth. Jesus made it very clear that. not to be rich. Was so a, was a if test. I see a rich, someone's cl- rich claiming to be a Christian, then I know they don't really take it serious. Hey, well, Olivia, that was a test. It, it, Jesus didn't That's say a, don't be rich. He was, was testing a, the man's faith because the guy claimed to believe in him mm-hmm. and that he had kept all the commandments. And That's Jesus, right. because he's God and knew the guy's heart, knew right. that the guy valued his riches more than God. And right. so he tested him by telling yeah. him to give it all up. That's not That's a right. general command to all rich people. That right. was a yeah, test for one right. specific person he was talking to at that moment. No, That's right. Not, but he says it's it's out of uh, a rich man, any rich man. No. Get into heaven. No. He said uh, he did. It's, it's you, easier you, for you, you, you to get well, into heaven than any rich man to get into heaven. That, that is a quote. From well, a are, you, miss, you miss all that TTR said. Uh, again, I know the Bible better than you do. Uh, you missed I know, everything. I know that you are. Are. If it uh, says any rich man, if it says a rich man, that means any. Rich no, man no, but do you know why Jesus said that though? Because he was, it was in criticism of the rich man that he had encountered. You would have to have a point if you remember. Do you even know what you book? Do you even know what book? Yeah. Wild Heart, you, I'm sorry, man. With all due respect, you don't know what you're talking about. Do you even know what book and chapter it's in? If you say, if you say a rich man, that means any rich man. By the I'll way, the language works. Oh, I, I know where it is. I just want to know if Wild Heart knows it. He doesn't know. Well, I, I want to show it on screen. That's what I'm looking it's, for. It's, 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 it's Matthew 19. Not? Matthew 19, start at verse 16. Right. right. Does he say a rich man? Because if he does, that means any rich man. By yeah, but, way, you, but, but, but Wild Heart, you're missing the point. He doesn't say that it's wrong to be rich. 
He's talking about the difficulties of rich people because they have everything in the world and they feel that they don't need God. They don't need salvation because they're rich. That's why he's saying that it's harder for them. He doesn't say it's harder for them because they have money. That's any rich person, yeah. He doesn't because say their money, their money is their temptation. Exactly. Their money is their God. So it does apply to all rich men then, is what you're saying. No, no I, he, ha I have the text on screen. Yeah. So <laughs> it's impossible for rich people to get into heaven. No. No. It says it's that you can't fit a camel through an eye of a needle, right? And no, 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 Jesus no. said to his disciples, truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom yeah. of heaven. Not impossible, hard. Wait, I, I thought I could have swore it said impossible. Are you sure? Person. He said someone who is rich. That means every rich person. Oh my gosh. This and I so heard impossible hard. in the translation I heard too. Oh, it's hard. No, it's that's because impossible. you're thinking of verse 26. Well, can a camel twice, go through the eye of a needle? You, you How think hard it, is it? It's like that hard. You're mixing, you're, when he uses the word impossible, that's not in the verse. That's not in the part where he's speaking about. Uh, how difficult it is for a rich man to go to the kingdom of heaven. Well, how Verse he gives an as, example. The example is a camel going through an eye of a needle, look, which look is at, impossible. Look at, look at verse 25. It, the disciple says, when they heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who can then be saved? And Jesus says, well, with men, this is impossible. Why does he say this is impossible? The He's saying that, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the disciples had this idea and a lot of people in their time had this idea that if you were a rich person, it would be easier for you to get saved than someone like them because God can really use you. Right. Exactly. So when they heard Jesus say this, they were astonished because it went against everything that they culturally believed about right. rich people. Right. Yeah, because we all agree that, you know, people with a lot of money, uh, they can they can uh, be very altruistic and uh uh, you know, make out many kind of profitable uh, moral contributions to society. Like, like but that thing they, like that thing they keep hanging Elon Musk with this week. All the lefties who are saying, "Well, you could have taken that forty-four billion dollars you used to buy Twitter, and you could have fed all kinds of poor and hungry people and solved world poverty and blah blah blah." Or help the I, climate, right? But yet he's okay. the one who created the electric. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, he could have fed the homeless yeah, if you were a Christian. I mean, that's true. He could have How do you, wait, found, now, he now, could have found schools. This. He could have done good things oh, with his Olivia. money rather than buy that website. That's Olivia, true. I'm not, that's Olivia, Olivia, I'm not saying I'm not saying Ola, uh, Elon Musk is a Christian. Now. I don't believe he is. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this though: How do you know that he hasn't made any type of contributions like that to help the poor? How do you know that? You just, you just because arbitrarily because saying he's got it. billions of dollars, only, he could change the world, but he hasn't. That, but you don't he's know. He's not a Christian. Only, you don't know if he's, he, he's not a Christian. I didn't the ask I didn't the ask only reason questions. I brought up Elon Musk is because what they've been criticizing him over is a perfect right. example of the idea that rich people can do a lot of good because of the resources they have. Yeah. That's yeah. the only reason I brought that up. We Hold got on, a new I need a great example of how you can tell he's not a room. Christian. Hello. We got Hi, a Brad. Hello. Hey, Rob, how are you? Oh. I'm good. I, I couldn't uh, stay out. I was trying very hard. For, <laughs> we for Olivia, I, I just wanted to say, I Olivia, say. yeah, Hi. Olivia, what, what you need to understand here, hi, I'm Rob, is that uh, when Jesus is speaking these words to the rich man, he hasn't paved the way yet. Right. He hasn't died yet. He hasn't uh, resurrected yet. So he's talking about one's ability to be able to be saved, that it is impossible for anyone to be saved and have right relationship with God without Jesus. That That's that's without him. That's going to be the ultimate end of the story. So it's the same reason, for instance, that. He would have appealed to the people on the Sermon on the Mount to say, you think that you're sinless, perfect because you don't uh, commit adultery. You have a wife and you do just fine there. But I tell you that even if you think about it with someone else, you're committing the act. The same with murder. Like you think, you know, so it's the same speech that he gave to other people as he gave to the rich man. But he sort of there were people in the audience, you can bet that had these uh, issues on the Sermon on the Mount, similar to the rich man. So he also said regarding murder, you think you're okay because you haven't killed anybody. But I tell you, even if you uh, get angry with someone, you have hatred in your heart for someone, 
that that is subjecting you to the same level of penalty. And yeah, so, Jesus was all about pointing out people's hypocrisy and saying you're no better than other people, and sin's ooh. pretty equal. No, it's a, little, he, it's a little more than that, Olivia. Yeah, he's, well, he's hung saying, out with whores. He's, he's not. He's not. He's if he's identifying hypocrisy, he's identifying it in me, T T O R, Veckel, and you, Olivia. Everyone, all yeah, of, all of humanity. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now you got it, and that's it. So. He makes sure that the people who are prideful, this is what he made sure, who felt uh, self-righteous, that they're, they're good enough because they do good things, they donate, they do whatever it is. He made sure that it was clear to them that, no, that's churches. not going to get you in. He no, was talking to churches. Works. Just works. You can't. No. There's, there's nothing you can do to, to earn your way in because Every single person, you, me, Veckel, Brett, everybody, my son, who's 15, you, you messed up. You're not going to be able to make it on your own merit. So in the case of the rich man, what the rich man needed to hear, which was a hard pill for him to swallow, and we, we know in the story that he didn't swallow it, was like, okay, here's where I'm going to show you, rich man. You think you abide by everything, but I'm going to show you your personal idolatry, and your idolatry is your love of money. And uh, when I tell you that, that you, you give up your money, all Jesus was doing there was not saying you're a bad person for being rich. He's saying you're, you are idolatrous and love money more than me. And that's exactly why you aren't deserving a relationship with me. Yeah. Right? I'll, right? Oh, God. Yeah, I, I will point out again, it does say someone who is rich, which means all rich people. Oh, it's come on, people. man. We're, we're uh, in I, that, in that same that. week. Guys, right. guys, can I point out the obvious here? It's uh, Wild Heart as well as Olivia. I don't know if you've ever even read the Old Testament, but you do know that God deals with a lot of kings and a lot of leaders in the Old Testament, and these men were wealthy. God had given them great blessings and things. So it's not about just having money it's about the greed and how it changes your behavior well, like, like in uh someone who is rich which would include every rich person well, look at uh first king Unless three like brett money. showed across the screen solomon talked to god and said god i don't know how to govern this kingdom i just want you to give me wisdom and knowledge so that i can properly govern and make proper discernment in terms of legal decisions and all this stuff and god said not only will I give you that, but because you asked for that and not for riches, I'm going to go a step beyond. I'm not just going to make you smarter than anyone who's ever lived or will ever live. I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you riches. So if being rich was a well, sin I'll... and a crime against God, why on earth would God give I'll... Solomon riches as well as wisdom? Yeah, I got another ring too. Is the, the Bible is inconsistent and contradicts itself, which I agree with. No, you. no, I got another wrinkle too. That, that, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus more likely thing, than not, was, was not a poor man as well. Some of the brothers here might disagree, uh, disagree with me, but I, I can support yeah, it. He, well, he, wasn't a, he wasn't a construction guy. Uh, he didn't oh, work with wood. Uh, like We like to portray him that way. I think Jim Caviezel <laughs> made a nice little bench or something in Passion of the Christ. He was a tecton, which is essentially the day. What, what he would have done is he would have been like a four-person, uh, a stonemason who, who uh, built things uh, you know, it, out of stone. That's why he used examples like uh, the capstone and things like that, that he had a great Bible? understanding of that. And he would have been, his father's business was certainly successful that he took over, not the, the his father in heaven, but his earthly father, his adoptive father's business was just fine. So Jesus was not a poor man. Uh, in well, fact, didn't he, my, the, he got riches from the kings who came when he was a baby. Well, Jesus well, and that is true been, too. That is he just would have been middle class, though, in terms of the kind of business he was in with his family. Well, I mean, I, I think he might have been a little higher, maybe high middle class. Maybe maybe upper middle class, maybe. But yeah, he definitely it, he wasn't part of the wealthy elite, that's for but sure. But Olivia is right. Like The, the things that the, the, the uh, as we refer to as the wise men, they brought some very expensive mm -hmm. stuff to him. That would have set the family up, may have even allowed Joseph to start his business. But didn't he say that all the time he's traveling and not? It does, does it mention him working in the Bible? He was a tecton, yeah. It uses the, the Greek word yeah. tecton. 
Well, Jesus, Jesus was 30 years old when he started his ministry. So obviously he would have been working that other job we've just been talking about prior to that. Yeah, let me see if I can find the Bible verse. Well, which verse are you looking for? Well, where it says that he's a tecton. Is it, uh, do you remember which gospel it's in? No, I'm looking. Well, he's a tecton. Tecton. And we, like, the way King James said it was like, like a carpenter, I think, like, yeah. is what it's King James said. Sound like some sort of transformer. <laughs> like a transformer. That's yeah, right. I don't know. Jesus was a transformer. Yeah, I'm going to go back to it. But that, that's a little wrinkle in there. So Jesus didn't uh, you know, say that he, he, couldn't, he couldn't have a job. One you know, shall he stand. couldn't make money. One shall fall. He didn't need money. Well, he was the missionary, and he, he just gave he people gave him money and gave him food and gave him a place to stay when he was traveling around. Eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah when eventually. he did his ministry, yes. It would be slightly hypocritical for him to ask other That's people right. to give away all their stuff if he was quite wealthy himself. He wasn't a rich. He wasn't a rich man. Rich rich guy. Right. Yeah, no, he he, I, he wasn't like the rich man that he was talking to in that. No, uh, no not in that one. But he's just saying other places. You you got to give away all your stuff to. Follow me, like we just say it in several different places. I think. Well, you said I think I know of the one, and, and the ones might have been identified. Can you show the other ones? Because I don't remember the other ones. But I think the crucial thing about what most people don't agree on in Christianity, and in general, is what faith and it takes to be forgiven. Is everyone forgiven by the sheer act of Jesus? sacrifice is an automatic forgiveness or does some act on our part need to be done for us to be saved if and you, then if, wouldn't uh, that act itself be you know it, mean that we have to save ourselves in again you know what i mean some act no, we have to do as the work of, mm. sorry sorry ttr go as i've said many times recently you have to repent and enter into a personal relationship with Jesus in order for his sacrifice to be applied to you. That's that what the Bible lays out. What does that mean? Is that the, so yeah. that can't be universal because not everyone can universally do that. I'm still unclear as to how you have a personal relationship with someone you've never spoken or thought, you know, seen met. Because Jesus is really God, he's it. eternal, he yeah. never died. Yeah, but you have, to, you have to like communicate with someone to have a personal relationship. I would say. So if yeah. Jesus has never yeah. he has never actually talked to you in person, then how can you have a personal relationship with him? Well, he about. speaks to me through his written word, and sometimes he puts thoughts in my head that clearly aren't my own. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I, well, I can't argue with that. So if that's true, yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I think that, yeah, I think that the mind that God gave us that, that has a consciousness, I think that that is a, a divine source. I think it is everyone's ability to connect to the higher source. It's what uh, separates us from the lower animals. Even science would probably agree with that. My dog may not because his, his conscience isn't as evolved as mine. He just loves me no matter. She just loves me. I no bet matter. his doesn't up too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just got so all the people her, that came before her. Jesus were just automatically forgiven. The people who lived like in other continents from Jesus right then who could never hear about Jesus, they're just what automatically forgiven or some different standard is applied. No, hold on. I got the verse that talks about exactly what you just brought up. I just got to add it to the stream. Let me guess, it's John 10. No. no. Hebrews 11, 39 through 40. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So before these verses, God had talked about, through his written word, all the different Old Testament people of faith. This is the famous Hall of Faith passage. And so what this passage that comes after is saying is that all the Old Testament saints, they were saved on what was to come, which was Jesus. We today are saved by what happened in the past, which is Jesus' sacrifice. So together we're saved by the same person, but mm -hmm. they were saved on future credit 
we were saved on past work of Jesus. That's the difference between us. So everyone's saved? No. No. Just the Old Testament people who were saved, they were saved on credit. People like me so are like saved Native Americans are saved. Work. Aboriginal pe Australians aren't saved. Who Who's not? So are they saved or no? Anyone are ancient Egyptians saved? If they, if they go to... Ha if they... They, they'll be saved the same way that everyone else is saved is through Jesus Christ and the grace of God. Well, how would an ancient Egyptian who built the pyramids know about Jesus? They wouldn't. The, but they would have the grace all, of God. All those who didn't know. I think well, saying all those that didn't know would be saved. Wait, wait a minute. Like, like, I'll, I'll, but I already, 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 already answered know. that question. Uh, people will be saved by the grace of God ultimately. Okay. We even see the Israelites embracing some Egyptians unto the Israelites because one one example, one guy didn't have a son, but he had two daughters. I think that uh, his name was Zelophehad or something like that. And he needed to marry them, but he didn't have a son. All he had were two daughters. So what did he do? He ended up letting them marry an Egyptian man. So what I'd like to point out in response to Olivia, well, who's going to be saved in all this? Luke 12, 47 through 48. This is Jesus talking says the servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows from everyone who has been given much much will be demanded and from the one who has been entrusted with much much more will be asked so what jesus is teaching here is that you're only responsible for what you know if you know a lot you're going to be held accountable for it if you don't know that much, you're going to be held accountable for the little you do know. And, and might I add, this is where Uncle Ben got the words, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Furthermore, I in Romans uh, 2, 14 through 15, it says, Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences, also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. This passage is teaching that everyone's consciences, everyone's heart, they know the laws of God, at least the very basic laws of God's. They know of God, they know in their heart and their consciences. Furthermore, in Romans 1, 18 through 20, we read, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understand, understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. So without any kind of gospel input, God says that everyone already knows just by observing creation that he exists and what his attributes are. Romans 2 makes it clear that we all know God's laws deep in our hearts, whether we subconsciously or subconsciously acknowledge it or not. And so those are things that all people know, regardless of whether they've ever had the gospel preached to them. So at the bare minimum, when God judges someone, if he judges mm -hmm. someone who's never heard the gospel, never heard about Jesus, never heard about any of the things I usually talk about in my videos, he's going to judge people by those three things. Do they acknowledge that I exist? Do they acknowledge what my attributes are? Do they follow the laws that they clearly know are mine that are in their heart? I believe in the severe case of someone who dies never having heard of anything in the Bible. Those are the three standards that God's going to judge them with. Right. And I totally agree with okay. that. Okay. So to get to a point you were making overall is that there are levels of punishment. Okay. Are Is it levels of hell someone, or is there someone, like a purgatory or some, what, what is that theology someone, coming from? Someone who has never heard of Jesus is not going to be punished for rejecting Jesus is what I'm trying to point out. Yeah, You're punished for yeah. what you know. Yeah. If you reject yeah. what you know, you're punished, and that will vary depending on what you know. So the more you yeah. know, the more responsible you are, because if you start rejecting so things that you don't like, of punishment then? You're, you're in trouble. Amen. So Amen. There, you're saying there's levels of punishment? No, yeah. there's levels. There's levels of knowledge. There's levels of judgment, but there's not different levels of punishment. The punishment's the same. 
And, and, that, that, and that's the way it works in everyday life, doesn't it? If you go out for a job and you're in training, you make mistakes, they understand you're new at it. You've been working there for five years and you take a dump on plates or whatever you're doing, they're going to say, what the hell? You've been working here for five years. You know, that's not the way we do. Take it <laughs> Very true. Very great. Well, I'm just saying, you know, we're talking about very severe punishment. Well, I, I think about it this way, Olivia. This is a nice way for you to think about it, I think, is that uh, one of my favorite theologians, a guy by the name of Dallas Willard, very, very bright man, God rest his soul. He was a brother in Christ. He said, uh, the fires of heaven may well be hotter than the fires of hell, which essentially means, uh, the way I interpret it, is, and every, everyone that can, who can tolerate heaven where heaven is heaven, will go there. I honestly, be, I, I believe that. And in your case, as an example, this God of the Bible irritates you, I think, bothers you. And the idea of you going to the place where this God of the Bible is, is someplace you don't want to be. Would that be a fair statement? Well, it depends on who's talking about it. But as far as, you know, uh, Christians... Generally speaking, kind of, yeah, I think that I wouldn't well, want to be around that. Forget about Christians. What, what you've read in the Bible about God. That, well, I haven't read not... anything in the Bible. I've never read the Bible. Well, you I've memorized, clearly, you memorized have an Bible idea verses about... and I had to go to church when I was yeah, a kid. You, you have an idea about some of the, the bad stuff, like Wild Heart. You know, you heard from Wild Heart. You know about the genocides and stuff, of the, the quote unquote, in the Bible, right? And that irritates you, right? Well, I mean, that's humans. The yeah, thing so that the problem I have it can be broken down as this. Mm -hmm. You can't say that there's this guy or this creature, I created you and I love you. But if you don't worship me and believe in me with no evidence, I'm going to torture you. Also, oh. you are free to be yourself, but unless you do exactly what I want of you, I'm going to torture you. But what, I love what you. I, what I'm trying to explain. And I'm going to be like, to, no, that's a toxic relationship. What, what I was trying to say so you'd understand. I mean, where I'm trying to go, because, I, I, you know, the torture thing we can debate, okay? I, 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 There's a part of me that was a big hurdle for me before I became a, a Christian. Uh, I didn't become a Christian until I was 37. So it's not like I, I wasn't born in the faith at all. Uh, so you, you're talking about a big hurdle for me. In the end... Uh, the point that I'm making that Dallas Willard was making is that it is very possible that for someone like you, Olivia, mm -hmm. heaven might be torture. And so God Maybe. gives you the ch God gives you the choice not to be to suffer in heaven, which is a place that you would be uncomfortable in. And that well, is the free will choice that he's given you. Because you I guess the if there's somewhere else to go. Because to me, think, to me really I mean, I, I would like for you as a non-believer to sit back and go, why are you fighting it so hard? Because well, I'm not a non-believer. Why, 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 <clears throat> why does the idea of simply believing in I'm this, not this beautiful story, uh, really, of God's uh, attempt to redeem man, let's, just, let's view it as just a fictional story. And we love that because... Uh, the Jesus story is in so much of our fiction. It's everywhere. It's in Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. Harry Potter is G it, it, Jesus, the Jesus figures, Harry Potter himself, who has to die for his friends. In fact, Dumbledore uses the very friend, the, the very uh, phrase that Jesus had talked about, about dying for your friend, you know, the greatest love of all kind of thing. It was a paraphrase thing. So uh, if you if, if view it as just a, a story of God, of, of this, uh, this entity that tries to get right relationship with his creation and he does it in a way where he he gives up himself there is a penalty for his creation as a result of this fall and he provided a means for them to have right relationship with him and all you had to do was believe you didn't have to have perfection you didn't have to have works that balance the scales right like a muslim all you had to do was believe in that with the work of Jesus on the cross and it's most especially the resurrection and that you would get eternal life through that. To me, that is not a story that's offensive in the least. I'd and, like to. Uh, oh, sorry. You finish. No, it's I'm okay. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So what I would like for you as a non-believer to focus on is, is that 
and not all of the angry questions you have, because the truth is, and, and I hope Veckel and TTOR and, and even Brett can, can agree is we, we can't, when you ask, when a non-believer asks what, us, though? Like, when here's you ask what us I'm to get into the mind of God, hold on one last thing. When you ask us to get into the mind of God, you're asking us to speculate. We could do our best and we can use scripture to kind of support our speculation, but we can't, you know, in the same way that, that, that TTOR can't, uh, tell you why I do the things I do on YouTube mm -hmm. and I can't do the same with him. I can't speak for him. I have an idea of why, but I can never say definitively. So the questions you ask us, you would have to agree. There is a, a level of unfairness to it. If you want well, to ask me how I got past that hurdle, I could tell here's you. Here's what I, I'm going to ask right now. And I'm going to suggest this thing. Sure. That you're not asking me to believe in say, um, a factoid is not the same as asking me to believe in a philosophy. Is that correct? Like, th is learning the years and dates of history the same as understanding history? Well, Do you know I mean, what I mean? They go together, no. but they're not the yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah, they they're not together. the same. Like, did you, like, memorizing when the declaration is signed doesn't mean you understand their director, direct declaration of independence. So I'm right, going to suggest right. this. I don't, if whether or not some person named Jesus who lived this time ago, blah, 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 is God, is do I have a belief in that? No. Do I believe I'm forgiven by God? Yes. And that's all I need to believe. Then whether that, that whether the specific magic of Jesus is real, I don't particularly oh, care. So what, what God do you believe in then? What's the, the God that created the universe. Well, what's his Why name? Are you... It doesn't need a good name. It, right. they, she, so they don't need a name. So they don't a, have a name. So you're a theist of some sort, but you don't believe in any particular God. Correct. Right. I don't believe in any flavor that I've ever heard uh, because they don't make any sense to me. It sounds like you believe in deism then. Yeah. yeah, I would say that that can. That I've I've gone by agnostic. I've gone by Christian. I go by deist. There's no well, Olivia. I'll, I'll say this. I'll <laughs> say that's a, that's a great start because you can't you can't uh, you can't I'm talk to someone now. about the gospel if they don't believe in God at all. So I'm I'm glad you're at that position that you believe in a God. Well, I mean, I don't I believe that if Jesus died for my sins, I don't need to do anything else. No work wait, of you, mine wait, makes me worthy. Right. Wait, 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 hold on a second. You said you believe that Jesus died for your sins? I'm saying if. Oh, if. Oh, okay. okay. If. So I don't need to go any farther in Christianity. If that's true, I'm saved. Yeah, and then and what's no. going to happen, though, to you is that like things start happening in your there's, – there's a new creation that's built. You, you become a different person, not in every way, but in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah, that's – you can't say – it's not like you're trying to – let me just make sure I'm understanding you. you say saying if it's true that Jesus died for your sins, then it doesn't matter. Correct. Okay, but the problem is, though, that you're, you're, you're skipping out on the part, too, that you have to, you have to believe. You have I believe to, I'm forgiven. I, I do believe that, so therefore not, I not, am. It, that, see, what you're preaching is universalism, that you don't even have to believe in Jesus Christ. Just the fact that he did something – Therefore, automatically makes everybody saved, whether or not they believe in them. See, that's that's not believe what, I believe though. Too. What do I have a, to believe in? Because yeah, like, Jesus what specifically you are you death, telling me I need death, to believe? Death, in? Burial, death, burial, death, burial, resurrection. The death, burial, resurrection. That is death, burial, resurrection. That is crucial. Death, burial, and resurrection. Who says death. I have to believe in that? Paul, uh, and, Paul First Jesus Corinthians said? fifteen. One to I don't care what I don't believe anything Paul says. I think Paul is a nasty person. But then you're not a Christian then. Which is but I'm not, Paul, I'm not a Paul, Paul, I'm not a Paul Jesus, Lincoln. Uh, Jesus appeared to Paul and gave him his message. So are you going to condemn Jesus, Jesus appeared too? to many Paul, people. Paul had, this is the thing with Paul, and this is what I'd, I'd ask you. You said you hadn't read the Bible, Olivia, so it would be helpful to do that. 
Okay. Right. I know I, the Paul I, I thing. Was, women yeah, today, I was the same as you. The, and I, I didn't. The women are I that women are evil and no, uh, he did not say that. Never said women are evil. He did not say that. No, he did not. No, he killed all sorts of people. He was a terrible human. No, no, we're going to correct you. He didn't say women are evil. So what I say for you? The fact that Paul never met the living Jesus. He had the living Jesus. Paul did. That's right. But he met. He met. He met people who knew the living Jesus. All right. Well. So Paul, Paul, and, Paul, and, Paul. and he hung around them and he yeah, learned from I'm them. Wait, who say he was healed by Paul? someone who was getting a little what chaotic the, here, ladies uh, and gents. Wait, 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 hold on. Too many people talk. Wait, who who's saying that Paul that Jesus never met? Who, who's are you saying Jesus yeah. never met Paul? He never met the, yeah, Jesus never met the living the physical uh, Paul exactly. never met the physical living Jesus. So why? Yeah, yes, he did. Oh, I, I think that's kind of wait a cool. minute. I, I would yes, he, he met he met Jesus guys, and he resurrected guys one at a time. And uh, listen, <sighs> I, I, I don't get this where folks have already admitted to not even reading the Bible. Yeah. Right. Yet you're just you're not even going to let someone give you the passage to show differently. This is odd way of doing yeah, things. This is yeah. not what I call critical thinking, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, well, because he's, you said that he well, said well, that, well, that, that well, women well, are evil. Well, that well, well, that well, well, that you really hate need, Paul because he didn't say that. Wild Heart, you really need to be educated before you speak uh, so bluntly. And about you don't need to read all the Here's the record of Jesus and Paul meeting right in front of us. Yeah, right there. Acts chapter 9, particularly at verse 15. If you want to look at that. Was I right about one one through uh one through seven is where he actually met Jesus. Oh, okay, right. Can I read it? The physical living Jesus. I love this passage. So meanwhile, Saul, that was his former name, was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found there any there who belonged to the way, capital W, where the men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. And the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. You want me yeah. to keep going? Uh, now nah, we're good. I think that pretty much establishes that Paul actually did meet Jesus. Yes, he did. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I don't have to take Paul's word for it. In fairness to Wildheart, he's talking about the bot. Like, not uh, Paul didn't know Jesus in the same way that James and John did. Right. All right. And so, all right, that's easy. But but the fact is, Paul knew James and John. So yeah, he no, could have said to that. James and John, look yeah. what happened to me and, and here's Jesus what I've Paul. heard and here's <laughs> what I've learned. And they, they had a little checks and balances thing. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 from 1 to 10 what the church believed yeah. within two decades, right? Isn't Less Paul than maybe 15 years. Never met I don't, I don't Paul believe God. Paul. I don't have to believe Paul, and he, I don't need people, to have faith in but, anything Paul wrote. You, because but, you're not a Christian. It's important, yeah, that right. it's important I don't for us. That's because I'm they, not, you have to believe in Jesus, not, not Paul. Christian, a, a Paul Christian, he, no, Christians, this is for Olivia. Christians Olivia. believe in Christ, right? So Olivia. what is the what is but, but Christianity about but, Christ? But, but, but what does Paul time, have to do Paul, with Christ? One at a time. Oh, I'm, telling you, I'm about to tell you. I, I want to. I think I can appeal to Olivia here. the The importance of Paul to me is, especially as a skeptic before I became a believer, is he is perfect. You mentioned history, Olivia. It is mm -hmm. Paul, where no secular historian, atheist, is going to say that you know there are no Paul mythicists. Okay, and for good reason. So we can use Paul to. You know, they say faith, the scripture says that uh, faith is the hope that we have and things unseen, something paraphrasing. But it's Paul and his letters and what we can de derive out of his letters that allows a Christian today to have 
confidence not just on things unseen but on things seen i.e the testimony of witnesses of people that we who we know really existed mm-hmm. because paul isn't an only guy paul paul luke the author of acts that we're looking at right now he tells the story of the early church where paul after at starting act seven i'm just saying why on, does that any of that matter though <laughs> It, because because then we we see this group of a small group spread like a virus when there was no like a wildfire is the best thing for me to say not a virus because it's a it, it's, be we, see it ahead, spread. we see it spread mm-hmm. in, a, in such an amazing way because since i'm a christian because it's all true it's written down. Or because Rome made it in a religion. Yeah, I mean, it didn't be no, Luke, Luke, no. Paul is real. Luke is real. Paul, Luke is real. These are. I'm these just are saying, real this, this, for what it is about, this, right? This, this Christ earth. came to Earth and forgave our sins. Why do I give a shit what Paul says? If if it happened, it happened. Well, how about how about you it give comes, a shit? Whoa, whoa, whoa! If it, if it happened, it give happened. If it happened, it happened. You stand condemned. No, if, if I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. Paul is just. Forgiving. I have faith. I'm forgiven. I don't need to have faith in. Uh, wait a minute. A guy Paul, named Paul, Paul Jesus, is is reiterating what which was probably reading. wasn't even his real name. Oh, Paul, like Jesus Paul. is a translation. That wasn't his real name. Oh, come on, not this argument. Come it's on. true. It's, it's just it's, an, an idea. You have faith in an idea, not a, a, a name. Listen, listen, listen. Nobody cares about the argument of Yesh- Yeshua versus Jesus, a- Jesus, and all that other stuff. These are transliterations, okay? That's not even right. Known. So but, it's an idea. You have faith in it, an it, idea. No, you no. You have no, faith no, in no, the no, idea no, that no, God no, forgives no, no, you no, and you no, should no, try no, to do better. Yeah, Olivia, no, it's not true. Olivia, Olivia, it's, uh, it is very, very annoying to try to read the minds of people, not actually let them tell you what they think or what their yeah, thoughts yeah. are. So please work on that. Oh, I'm just saying what my thought is. Why well, that's all it needs for me. It my faith is lot. I have faith. I'm forgiven, and that I should work to be a better person. Yeah, but that's Olivia, you keep on claiming about. that you have never read the Bible, and then mm-hmm. you make claims, and then when someone tries to answer, then all of a sudden the response is, right. well, "Why should I care? Well, right. I mean, why kinda, should I care? Like kinda, the only important it's, part it's, is it's if I'm going to go to heaven though. or hell." Because Jesus said. Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. That's why you should care. Well, what does that mean? It means that universalism is false. Why do you believe it, though? It means universalism is false. How does it mean that? Because there's only well, one it, way to get to heaven, and universalism it, it, yeah, always goes there. So you don't it, believe it is Jesus. a reason to believe if no. the God of the Bible is attractive to you. If he's not, if the idea of spending eternity with that God of the Bible is abhorrent to you, then God will give you that free will choice. In fact, like I said before, I heaven guess. may be may be torture for you. So Maybe. God will give you, God will I can't see. Where, we got or another person feel- in the room, folks. Yeah. Who is Raffi right. Dawson? Uh, come on, camera, Raffi. <laughs> Raffi. Raffi, are you going to say hello? Speak up. Hello, Raffi. Are you real? Is this All thing right, on? <laughs> is he a real person? Oh, real there person? we go. <laughs> there we go. It's one of those things, Brett. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah I would encourage you before I leave. <laughs> yes, before really? I leave, Olivia, I, I'd encourage you to read the book that you, you're not a big fan of. It's 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 helpful to read it first and then then come to a conclusion. Which version? Oh, I would recommend reading it anyway, even if you don't believe in the religious. Read book. whatever so version well, you can understand. KJV, PSV, whichever one you want to read, just read. I even like the ones that people call satanic. In fact, I came to faith via the NIV. So if you want to read the NIV, we can talk. Maybe not Veckel. <laughs> but, I don't but, know. Uh, yeah, we can talk. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't read the V-E-K-L translation. So. I, I would concur with Rob. If you can read the Bible and properly understand what it says, Olivia, and yet you still reject it, we'll respect you for that. But yeah, you should yeah. at least know what you're rejecting before you yeah, reject it. Yeah, I agree it. with that. Can I just say, I've never read the Bible, but I am certain I've heard every part of it discussed over the last 15 years on YouTube. 
Yeah, yeah, but you don't have. Okay, you've heard every passage. You don't have. I just went through the I just went through the book of John and Acts again, and I I new stuff came to me that I didn't. I totally. Yeah, uh, well, 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 with all due respect, you, it doesn't matter how many times you read the scriptures. You clearly demonstrate over and over again that you don't know what it is that you read. What by proving you wrong twice at least? Just uh, on the show. no, you just didn't. Before, and, before, and, every rich man, and, and, if you want to debate me on any topic regarding Christianity, I was would every gladly, rich man? I would so gladly accept it. You you named it. You named it. Wild heart, please. Are you going to let people respond, or are you just going? keep talking over them i don't know how they do things in your country but in order to have a conversation one person exactly. needs to be quiet exactly. or the other one talks and then you switch back and forth it's an interesting yeah. concept yeah he was he well, was well, well, wild heart. no no wild heart. uh you you just named the time and the place uh, i would gladly uh debate you anytime on any well, topic regarding the tenets of christianity sorry. anytime you're ready Right. What about? Do you agree that it, it, the Bible says every rich man, someone who is rich, means every I, we've, rich man. Uh, everyone in this room that is a student of the Bible is already proving you wrong about that. We had uh, both no, passages know, from Jesus and the rich so man story rich. on screen, uh, and in both passages, it said that it was hard for the rich man to enter, not that right. it was yeah. impossible. Yeah. So and sure, you're I'll, wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll grant Wildheart every rich man. Rich. Sure. Just set that on its own. Someone who is rich, does that mean every rich person? Because oh it does. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we, uh, Wild Heart, we, uh, Wild Heart, listen, listen, listen. We've already explained this to you about why Jesus said what he said about uh, it being hard for a rich man. To... Listen, listen. All right. We've already explained this to you. Stop talking. This is why you don't. Shut your fucking mouth. Oh. Wild heart, man. He just needs to be quiet for a second. This is why he's asking the same questions in every hangout that he goes to. It's because he doesn't listen. Do the, listen? Point, the point isn't wealth in that you know. passage, Wild Heart. It's idolatry. Exactly. In TTLR, that's it. That's that's it. It. Really so, so, yes, it is, it is hard for... So I'm, I'm throwing you a bone. It is, hard, it is hard for every rich man to to it, it'd be easier for a camel to go through an eye of needle yes why because of their idolatry and exactly because jesus is saying that and because jesus is saying that he's obviously before, not listening he's not listening before you're just you're, you're phased out we can see the look in your eye it's like a deer yeah you glaze like, oh, you glaze like oh, a fish oh, about to oh. You know, in all fairness, that could just Rob, be the light yeah. reflecting off his glasses. Can I, can I Rob, Rob is talking. Rob is talking, and he and he's just talking over can Rob. I, They're not can even. I, can I ask Rob a question, please? So, do sure. you, he, no, wait, 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 wait. Before you ask a question, do you did you understand anything I, that Rob I just was said halfway through the sentence? Yeah. Wild heart. Do you did you understand anything that Rob just said to you? Yes. You no, you don't. That it was a rich man. Is that, is that correct? Sure. Sure, I'll no. grant you that. No. How about that? All right, and so, so what, Wild did you Heart, what did Rob say earlier? Can you describe even just a couple of the yeah. things that Rob was telling you? Yeah, why yeah, did it was it was about uh, salvation, not. Okay, let me do it this wrong. way. Let Let's me do it this way. Again. Let's Let's try again. again. What hey, is, give me one, hold on. What is one verse that TTOR has given you towards this discussion? Just name I don't one know verse. The I can't name okay, the that's five exactly name. You're not even hard. listening. Yeah, You're just like, but what about the rich man? What about the rich man? What about the rich man? You're not listening. No, I don't know the names. Can I ask you a question and be honest with me? This is no hate or anything, but do you have attention? I'll even I'll even cheat and put the scripture back. Back on screen. <laughs> here, go ahead. Put it up on screen. Show them. Here you go. The rich man story right here. You're telling me that, that, that uh, only Elon Musk can go to heaven. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, no. What, 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 what I would say is, Wildheart, not only did Jesus say every rich man yeah. uh, won't, but every poor man as well. Right. Wealth, I mean. wealth is Anybody? not the important. So that's it. Everybody has our own little personal idolatry. Sometimes it's the poor people. Their mm -hmm. own poverty becomes their idolatry yeah. as well. Well, Everyone... you got to understand. The, I'm sorry. I'll be real quick. The real reason why Jesus is saying this, uh, the real point of all this is to show you the utter impossibility it is for man through his own efforts or his uh, reputation to get into heaven. Okay, Amen. it is solely yep. by the grace of God that you must get in heaven. 
That's why he There's gave him that point. challenge. Oh, oh, you got all this money? You kept all of the commandments? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, ah, I know. Go give all your stuff for free to the poor. And he just like, uh, I think somebody's calling me. I'll be right back. And he left. Yeah. That, that's fair enough. But my point wasn't about any of that. It was just on the simple basic facts. He was talking about every rich man. That was the only point I was trying to No, prove. when he yeah, says it it's yeah, hard it for a rich It wasn't a statement to wealth, that's all. Yeah. Like if, when if he you says only it's hard see, for... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you only see that that deals with wealth, then it's like you're reading it like you're reading green eggs and ham. And, and yeah. it's much... It's much deeper than that. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was I didn't care about it. Like, 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 like is it possible that Dr. Seuss had a bigger point than just green eggs and ham <laughs> in this story? <laughs> I wasn't bothered about the points, is my points. I was bothered about the point point is, is, man, and it does well, are you dealing with minutia that really well, 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 one more thing on. one more thing because we're wasting our time if yeah. we're just if he's not even going to listen, let's make sure that he's actually listen. listening. Wildheart, what did me and TTOR say to you about Solomon earlier? Solomon. Wow. He ain't talking about the fish. Okay. Fish. I genuinely See, don't know. Wildheart, we went, we spent like 10 minutes talking about a, this oh. man who prayed for wisdom. And God said, not only am I going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give oh, you yeah, I'm going to give you, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so yeah, does yeah, that yeah. not clearly tell you that it's not about the money itself yeah. or the yeah. wealth? Yeah. It's about how a man seeks wisdom and also wants to follow yeah. as God's will is. But some people are not able to do that. They're not able to put away their material things. This uh, is yeah. what's been being told to you. That was yeah, the problem no, with the rich man Jesus was talking to it, yeah. I'm not great with names, that's all. I didn't remember that it, that was Solomon you were talking about. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says that if you make over this certain amount of income, sorry, bye-bye. I mean, it, <laughs> There's no prohibition. All right, gentlemen, it, it was yeah. fun. I got I'll, I'll I got to head out. But all right. I take care, Rob. Good seeing you. Thanks See you later, for brother Rob. Me in, gentlemen. God bless you. See you later. You take care. Be safe. Well, I, I was just arguing that I made the point that it was every rich man. It meant every rich man, and Beckel disagreed with me and said that every rich man about. that puts no. But you were trying to assert. Right. You were trying to assert that the Bible says that. Uh, you, you were trying to assert uh, or imply that uh, only rich people can uh, can get to heaven or something like that. That wasn't the point of us bringing up Matthew nineteen. I didn't, I didn't we were that. talking about idolatry, as TTR brought up before. I did not because that. rich people are more capable of putting their possessions before a relationship with God. That's why he asked him. That's why in the beginning of that whole encounter, what does Jesus do? He asked him, why do you call me good? There's only one that's good, and that's God. That's not a question that Jesus is asking because he doesn't possess omniscient ability. He's asking him a rhetorical question because the whole conversation is about the contrast between the the, the perfect holiness of God versus the utter depravity of man, the inability for him to receive uh, uh, God's grace through his works, through his possessions, through his reputation. So that's why he tells the rich young ruler, go ahead and sell all of your possessions to the poor. And we see how the rich man took that. He says, ah, I'm going to go over here. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. Bye-bye. He went away sad. Is what it's he, went away, he went away sad. Right. Can, I, can I finish? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Let's let, um, let's let Wildheart let finish. finish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my point was never about that. I was just going off the language. When it says a rich man, my only point was that means every rich man. And it turns out oh, that the Bible says right, someone right. who is rich. Keep going. Right, right, right. Same thing uh, over and over. Let over. Me, uh, hold on uh, a second. Hold on right. one hold second. On. second. Wildheart, do you have somebody that lives with you or somebody that's nearby? No, all of them. Can you tell them to slap you because your record <laughs> keeps on repeating itself? I finally... Uh, because no one's listening and no one understands what I'm saying. That's why. I have to keep repeating myself because no one understands yeah. what I'm saying. I'd like to agree with Wildheart on this one point. He is right. The language does indicate that it is hard for rich men, and it is speaking generally, to enter the kingdom of God. And the reason why that is, is because their own possessions becomes their idol. When you get a lot of stuff, your natural tendency is not to lose it. And so that can drive you to do things that you really, really shouldn't be doing. And it will definitely 
come before your relationship oh. with God if you let it. I want I want to apologize. I made a mistake. Uh, I think TTR, you reminded me of, of a mistake I made uh, regarding Wildheart. Wildheart didn't say that only rich people could go to heaven. He was saying that he was indicating that only rich people could not go to heaven right. based off of the faulty interpretation of Matthew 19. Right. And what we were saying is, no, that's not the case. You don't, you know, because God makes people rich. Solomon, yeah, yeah. So that was never my point. It was just a language thing. When it says a rich man, it meant every rich man. That was my entire point. I wasn't. I don't care about heaven or. So, 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 so and the reason why it's hard is because their possessions and wealth can become very okay. easily an idol to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you should also bring up the other pa the parable in Luke. I want to say twelve. I could be wrong. Where it talks about the the man, the rich man who had uh, increased things, and really? he had so much increase that he didn't have a place to put the rest of his his belongings. So then he says, uh -huh. um, "Found it." I'm, Thirteen through twenty-one. Yeah, is it, oh. is it chapter twelve? Yes. Or fourteen? I, I want to say it's, it's twelve. I'm just uh, so it's twelve. Yeah, earlier on in the chapter. Yeah, sure. that's one of my favorite uh, parables. I love that parable. Had to stream. Here it is. Yeah, man. Yep. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or, arb or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Then he And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. Ooh -wee. So that parable Ooh. is definitely geared towards the point of if you have wrong relationship with God, your possessions mean nothing and you'll eventually lose them. Yeah. Either, either through some freakish accident or event or just through the course of nature when you die. Could you imagine if, if the, the wicked, the rich wicked people were able to see what happens to their money after they die? <laughs> like I don't know what hell's going to be like. What hell's like, uh, except for what Scripture reveals. But I, I, I can't help but to wonder if that will be one of the aspects of uh, God showing them what people after their death are doing with their possessions, and the people in their graves are rolling over. Like, no, I didn't want the money spent on that. They just used my money to build another church. No, <laughs> you know. Kind of like that story of Voltaire, I think. Uh, you guys could correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I, the story goes that he was a hardcore, God-hating atheist. Uh, and he was set fully on destroying Bibles and stuff. And then he made a uh, proclamation that uh, I think hundreds of years after his death, Christianity would cease to exist. But then after he died, the building that he used to burn uh, Bibles... Uh, had uh, there was some sort of accident where I think it caught on fire, and then years later it was rebuilt, but that building was then used specifically to print Bibles. God does have guess and he's got a sense of humor. Yes, saying. absolutely. You beat me too much. God does have Speak. a sense of humor. Yeah. Speaking of what happens to rich people's money after they die, Solomon actually gave us some insight into that in Ecclesiastes 2, 17 yeah. through 23, where he wrote, So I hated life because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish, yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil with which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So mm -hmm. my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. 
For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then they must leave all they own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? All their days, their work is grief and pain. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This too is meaningless. <laughs> mm. That is what a rich person may be thinking when they start to think about what's going to happen to all my stuff when I die. <laughs> so Voltaire, the, the French philosopher, announced 100 years from my day, there will not be a Bible in the earth except one that is looked upon by an antiquarian curiosity mm. seeker. I wonder what this thing is. Hmm. Yeah. And then he's and then in 1778, he said, and and then two years later he says, "It took twelve men to start Christianity. One will destroy it." <laughs> and that he died, and he died that year. A hundred years later, Voltaire was dead on his own press, and his own press and house were being used to print and store Bibles by the Geneva Bible Society. <laughs> That's one of history's greatest <laughs> ironies. <laughs> Again, you know, in the book of Esther uh, is probably the only book that where God is not mentioned directly, uh, but you do see his, you do see him work in, in the story though. And uh, there's another example of, of God having a sense of humor there. You know, uh, what he did with uh, Haman. Haman had this, uh, he, was a, he was a Jew-hating individual. He had uh, built the gallows uh, for mm -hmm. a Mordecai who was a Jew. Uh, but then uh, things turned around somehow where he ended up himself <laughs> being hung on those things that he designed for, for Mordecai. Mm -hmm. you know, so it was uh, kind of a funny thing in a morbid fashion, but... King Xerxes understood irony. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's clearly British. Yeah, he understands that irony and sarcasm. Yeah, he's got to be British. Yeah, another example of God having a sense of humor is the fact that atheists exist. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we are about two hours and 19 minutes in, and I think this is a good point to bring the show to a close. So thank you, everyone who has participated in this room. And thank you, everyone who has been watching this stream the whole time and interacting in the comments section. We notice your comments and we appreciate them. So I hope you guys have a good evening. And I'm going to go ahead and transition to our outro video. So thank you for watching. And whenever I see you next, that's when you'll see me. Ta-ta for now. God bless. We hope that you've been enjoying God TV Radio hosted by Brett Keen. When you get an opportunity, check out our public radio station. Check out our books, music, and art. You can also buy t-shirts if you would like to support us. If you don't want a t-shirt, you don't want books, you don't want music, well, you could always do a one-time donation through PayPal. Any support is appreciated. God bless.